Senator Colbeck. Thank you very much, Madam President. Can I ask for uh, silence in the... Uh... You know, the, my colleagues, the road debate started uh, by Governor Snyder back in uh, 2011. Um, started when he cited four major issues that we faced as a state during his State of the State address. Only it really hasn't been much of a debate. Rather than define our objective as to how best to fix our roads, the objective of the roads debate has devolved to how best to raise at least $1.2 billion to fix our roads. It has become a race for how to raise an additional $1.2 billion in taxes or maximum fraction thereof. The objective effectively excludes solutions that don't raise taxes, like building higher quality roads and the temporary reprioritization of existing revenue. There is unanimous agreement that we need to fix our roads. Our disagreement is on the subject of how. Proposal 1 featured $2 billion in new taxes. It was rejected by 1,404,799 voters. 81% of those who voted said no. Not quite unanimous, but pretty darn close. So how did the legislature, the representatives of the people, respond to the will of the people? Well, in June, the House put out a measured plan that featured $119 million in new taxes and $700 million from existing funds. In July, the Senate responded with a plan that featured $800 million in new taxes and $700 million from existing funds. Please note that both chambers agree that we should reprioritize $700 million in existing revenue. I have demonstrated that $700 million is more than enough to fix our roads if we simply build roads that last longer. Since this solution does not seem to fix the tax increase objective echoed by the media, it has sat idle while tax increase advocates went back to the drawing board. In August, discussions in the House around a 600-600 plan fell apart after an attempt to connect our solution for the roads to fixing problems in Medicaid by increasing the HICA tax. Discussions have now gone behind closed doors as tax increase proponents attempt to cobble together a way to increase our taxes by over $800 million and market it effectively to the very people that rejected a a, our, an increase to our taxes by a four to one margin. Today, I would like to issue a challenge. I would like to issue a challenge on how best to fix our roads. After all, that should be our objective, not tax increases. Today, I would like to issue this challenge to every elected official in this chamber, the chamber down the hall, and the folks who sit over in the Romney building. I want to issue that challenge on how to dispense with politics as usual and bring these discussions into the light of day for all to talk about. Today I'm issuing a public debate challenge to any state elected official who believes that we need to increase our taxes. No more talking points lobbed over the fence to the media. It is time to subject the validity of your assertions to rebuttal in a public forum. All that I ask is that the debate happen prior to voting on the next iteration of road bills and that it not occur on a Sunday. I happen to believe that we can fix our roads without increasing taxes or cutting education or public safety. In fact, over the past three years, I have provided solutions to our road problems that would do just that. Other state elected officials have expressed similar views and are welcome to join me in defending this assertion. I, for one, am willing to test my assertion in public debate. If you are an advocate of tax increase to fix our roads, are you willing to subject your view to public debate? And if not, why not? So the choice is yours. You can return to backroom echo chambers filled with tax increase advocates, or you can test your assertions and the solutions they yield in the full light of day. It's time to move past the false narratives and restore an appreciation for the grand tradition of reason and debate that used to be the hallmark of our system of government. In the final analysis, our roads debate is a symptom of a much larger problem. Our citizens are losing respect for our system of government. They are losing respect for our elected officials. When within two months of the Proposal 1 vote, the response to 81% of our voters rejecting a tax increase was to propose another tax increase, this time without a vote of the people, it is easy to see why. Our citizens deserve much better. You can give them better by contacting my office to express your willingness to join me in this debate. 
I should point out that if no state elected official contacts my office within one week of today, it leads me and the rest of our 10 million citizens to conclude that we do not need to increase taxes to fix our roads. And now is the time to pass legislation that fixes our potholes without digging holes in our wallets. I'd like. Thank you, Senator Colbeck. Your remarks will be printed in the journal.